Hello and welcome to Draw and Talk. And I think this might be the first episode because I called the last episode the pilot episode. So uh, this might be the real first episode. I don't know, maybe I'll end up calling this episode too. So that's part of the narrative. Whatever, whatever number or word you see in the title of this Draw and Talk, that's... That's the true, the true ending. Um, I'm going to be drawing Tom DeLong and talking a little bit about Blink-182, which is my favourite band. They're a pop punk band and I really like them and they have like a really interesting sort of history. I thought it would be very interesting to talk about today. So that's what I'm going to do. Um... One thing I wanted to talk about before we uh, jump in here is uh, since the last draw and talk, um, I got my my letter, my letter to the uh, gender therapist, which made me really happy because I've been waiting for that for over two years, and I didn't think I'd get it this early. I thought I'd have to wait until 2022, but that's amazing. Like amazing for me to have that knowing that I can um, actually finally see someone about this and maybe start my transition and I'll keep you guys uh, you guys and gals and everyone else updated on it I'll let you know how it goes but uh, yeah so this is Tom DeLong and he is he was see because this 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 band has a sordid history he was the front man like i don't know if he was the front man like mark hoppus the bassist he also sang a lot of the songs but he was the guitarist of blink 182 um and that's the fellow we're drawing today and i think a lot not all, but a lot of the the weirdness of the drama attributed to the band. You can sort of attribute it to Tom and Tom's Tom's strangeness. But yeah, they Blink One Eye Two. Let's have a look at my notes because I wrote I wrote a freak ton of notes about Blink One Eye Two. They were formed in Poway. California in 1992, a suburb suburb north of San Diego. Now, I don't know if I'm saying Poway properly. I hope I am, because there's a lot of Poway at the start of the story. There's a lot of Poway, this, Poway, that. So, I really hope I'm saying it right. But yeah, see, our fellow Tom here. From what I know about him, he was very interested in uh, in punk rock sort of music. I think some of the bands he liked, No Effects, Propaganda, you know, stuff like that. And I just want to talk a little bit about what kind of Tom I'm drawing here. Like, he's got a skateboard, he needs to be into skateboarding, and I think during the 90s is when he would have skateboarded the most. This Tom along here with the... Um, the lip piercing, the lip ring, he would probably not be skateboarding that much at that point because I think he stopped skating, like, he stopped skating uh, when the band started to take off. But yeah, so the inciting incident is, um, Tom gets expelled from his high school. Uh, let's have a look here. Poway High School. Now let's, let's pray that I'm saying Poway correctly. Because I'm not American. You know? I'm not American. I can't say American words. Well, I can. Just not that American word. That's that Poway. Poway? Poway? Poway High School. 
he was drunk at a basketball game and he finished his junior year at Rancho Bernardo High School. And there was a Battle of the Band competition, so the story goes, and that's where he met Scott Rayner, who was the drummer of Blink-182 for the first few years of the, bla the band's life. Scott Rayner. Now, I'm trying to be careful, because like, he doesn't actually have very curly hair. I like to draw curly hair on my guys. Like, not curly hair, but like messy hair. Like, it's my favourite type to draw, but like, he's got... Tom has like this, it's messy at the front, but the rest of it is very straight kind of looking. If you have a look at that. I don't know, I got an artistic license, so I won't worry about it too much. And then he subsequently met Mark Hoppus, and that's where the band really started to take off. I've got an interesting fact here. Um, the band was originally called Just Blink, but apparently there was an Irish techno band called Blink, and they got in copyright trouble with this Irish techno band called Blink, and they had to change it to Blink 182. Well, they chose to change it to the 182 at the end. Well, there you go. My my country is involved in this, this sordid history in a way. Well, let's see what happened after all that. Now their first album, Fly Swatter, and you can look this up on YouTube, Fly Swatter. It is it's lo fi as hell. And I've listened to it a couple of times now. But it's good. Like, you can tell that they, they have something there. Their early sort of records were very skate punk. And as they went on, they became a bit more refined into the pop punk that we know and love from Blink today. But Fly Swatter was recorded in the drummer's, Scott Rayner's bedroom, and it was released in May of 1993. One thing that always, um, should I talk about this? I just, whenever you look at the, the, like, the little crappy cover art they did for this thing, is they attribute some of the songs to Fags in the Wilderness records. Which I don't want to say because that's a slur. I mean, it's a slur that I'm apparently allowed to say, but um, I still don't want to say that. But I said it, so. Whoops. Um, like with every episode of Draw and Talk, there are content warnings in the description. So have a look at those. And I should put some text up at the start with, with some of the content warnings, so. Like, that doesn't hit someone out of left field. But sometimes I talk about stuff like that on... Draw and talk. And, you know, I think that's interesting. Because Blink-182, they do make a lot of, like... Gay jokes. And I think it kind of starts there with them... Colin... I don't know, maybe that's an actual record label. I don't think it is, but... I think they wanted to... They wanted to have a bit of a laugh. I mean, it's Blink-182, so of course they wanted to have a bit of a laugh, but, um... They always, on stage... Because this is one thing that people like about Blink-182, they're very talkative on stage. You know, it's as much as a music show as it is, um... A show just about the fellas joking around and they make jokes about Mark and Tom they make jokes about each other being gay all the time but one thing that I've always liked is that I never like came off in a mean spirited way you know it's more like it always felt more like they're saying yeah we, we get that some people like we're close friends 
we get that some people might be calling us gay because of that but instead of being Egypts that are like no homo we're gonna kind of embrace that and play with that on stage that's the vibe I get from it you know I don't think every joke they've made especially in the early years is in good taste I think there's a lot of it that's in poor taste but you can tell that they they weren't trying to be malicious they weren't some like weird outright sort of band they just kind of had a weird sense of humor i'm not excusing any of the the bad problematic stuff they've said but it wasn't it wasn't like to be edgy it's more like just shit posting really that's what I'd call it. That's what I'd call what the band's the band's sense of humour. Shit posting before shit posting was a thing. Um Okay. Coming back from that tangent. Then they released Buddha in nineteen ninety four. Then Cheshire Cat was like I think that was the first professionally recording one. One thing that I always think is interesting is that they have this song called Carousel, which I really love. Um, I like to ask if people prefer the um, Cheshire Cat or Buddha version of it, because the Cheshire Cat version has this this lovely intro, but um, the Buddha version has like this nice. Um, the intro is nice in the Buddha version as well. It's just. It's just the Mark Hoppus's, um bass. And the plainness of it kind of gives it a nice vibe that the other version doesn't really have. And then they released Dude Ranch in 1997, which is the year I was born, interestingly enough. So it's weird to think that like I was just a baby and they released this record which is one of my favorite records by them it's very um they really hit a stride with it one of the first songs I learned on guitar was damn it which is from dude ranch which yes that that title is um a weird innuendo but I digress What do you what what else can we expect from our blink boys than that? Um There's also I think this is is this Dude Ranch, right? There there's a song called Dick Lips on Dude Ranch, which is all about the inciting incident. This is another thing that I like about Blink One Eight Two, they kinda immoralized some of the the band's history in the songs so dick lips is about um tom getting expelled from his high school and how that subsequently um led to the formation of blink 182 i think he has a solo album called i think it's called to the stars but it's just tom DeLong. it's not angels and airwaves which is which, spoiler alert, is the band he went on to do when he left Blink, Angels and Airwaves. But he has his solo album with this um, song called Suburban Kings, which is also all about like Blink-182 and how, and how he looks back on it as an older person, how he looks back on those years. It's quite a nice song. I would recommend you give it a listen. I recommend you give all of Blink-182 a listen, but that's just me. Um, what I love about the band is, like, every single... Like, not... They, they have some... They have some songs that I don't like, but... That's the thing, with most bands, like... You, you only really love a couple of their songs, like... Not a couple, but, like, a couple... You know, a few songs. And then the rest kind of mediocre, and then you have some songs that you just wouldn't listen to. Blink-182 for me, like, almost every single one of their songs, I just... It's just good. I just enjoy it. I can go back to it, and I can listen to it again and again. And I have. In fact, I'm kind of sick of Blink-182. <laughs> I am. Um, I'm 
damn, I'm a bit sick of them because I listened to them so much since 20... 2018, which is when I really started to get into them. I mean, I've always heard their songs. Like, they are... They did go mainstream. I've always... I've always heard their songs. All the small things. Adam's song. Stuff like that. You know, that's really... That was really um, mainstream and popular. But their mainstream breakthrough was Anima of the State. It has all of the songs we know Blink-182 for. It has um, All the Small Things, What's My Age Again, Adam Song, you know. And it has that that cover art that, um, you know, everyone remembers it for. Because everyone's always dressing up as the freaking nurse from the anima of the state um, cover. It's like a freaking, it has made a lot of cross-dressing happen, I will say that. Which, good on them, good on them. You could always use more cross-dressing in this world. Um, in fact, his eyes are hard to draw. When I was drawing this, I was like, how do I draw Tom DeLonge's eyes? Because Tom has a very specific sort of face, but it also is is a bit generic. Which I don't know how you can have such a such a default looking face that is also very recognisable. Maybe it's just because he's famous. Like I don't know. Like a lot of famous people have a face that kind of looks like that. I don't know, but like. If, which made it very hard to actually draw. Like, I don't think that what I've drawn actually kind of captures him as much as I'd like it to capture him, but it'll certainly do. Then they released um, Mark Tom Travis Show, which is a live album, which is good. You know, it kind of gives you a taste for what their live shows were like and the kind of um, weird off-colour jokes they would make at them. Oh yeah. Uh, Scott Rayner also left the band at this point. Dude Ranch was the last album with the drummer Scott Rayner. Um, and it's said that he left the band because of alcohol problems and he wasn't showing up to uh, to uh, shows and playing poorly and stuff like that because he's just had a problem with alcohol. And then they released a single called Man Overboard, which many people, I don't think this has ever been officially um, said by the band, but many people believe that it's about Scott Rayner and I think there's actually a bit in it that almost sounds like there's a bit at the end where Mark says yeah later see you around and it kind of sounds like he's saying Scott Rayner see you around I don't know I can't be the only one that has noticed that But yeah, so, oh shit, his nose, they got Travis Barker to fill in for, for Scott for a few shows, and they ended up really liking Travis, and Travis, um, what can I say about Travis, he loves the drums, this, this mother yucca loves the drums, like, in every interview, like, I love watching interviews with Travis, because, like, they ask him what it's like to be in Blink-182, and, like, in the early interviews, he would say stuff like, oh, it gives me such a great opportunity to to play drums. <laughs> this, this guy freaking loves playing drums, and that's all he cares about, which is great, because, 
that's what Blink-182 needed in that moment, someone to just play drums for them. It's gonna work. Oh, it works. Yeah, I'm having I'm having trouble getting these eyes just right. But it's okay. It's like like all the draw and talk episodes, it's not meant to be like a perfect perfect um drawn. Um yeah, what's bothering me is you can kind of tell the eyes are on different fucking planes or something. Um, let's have a look at that. You know that? That's okay, yeah. We can deal with that. But another song on Anima of the State is Aliens Exist. And this is where we start figuring out about Tom DeLonge's alien obsession. And apparent, apparently, according to a couple of people, he's been obsessed with aliens like since forever. Like since even before the band was a thing, he's always loved aliens. And you can tell aliens exist and then... Um, they came to conquer Uranus was um that was an EP or something I think you call those an EP like alien imagery on on the cover but aliens exist is all about Tom DeLonge's obsession with aliens which many people cite as a big reason for him leaving the band. Which I think is, I think it's a part of it, to be honest. Like, you can say he left the bands and went and chased aliens, and that's like, that's valid. I mean, he did do that. But aliens exist. Um, I found an interview, like, from 2016, I think. I think it was 2016. Or he talks a bit more about aliens exist and what it means. At the end of the song, now I never knew what this meant until I saw this interview. At the end of the song, he says, I'm not like you guys, 12 majestic lies. Apparently he's talking about the majestic 12. And here's, here's a quote from the interview that I thought was interesting. I put the name in that song, and the irony now is that I'm dealing with people from the modern version of whatever that group is called. It's a big deal. So, Tom's like, I'm dealing with people from the Majestic 12 now, and he has talked to a lot of people that are, like, a lot of high-level people. Now, I'm gonna link in the description to, to an episode of a podcast I used to enjoy a lot. Um, called the stuff they don't want you to know and they have an entire episode about Tom's along and how he's involved with conspiracy theories and aliens and all that but yeah so Tom DeLong says in that interview like oh I'm dealing with the Majestic 12 now, I don't know too much about what the Majestic 12 are but apparently, um, so it goes, the conspiracy theorists say, is, say, say that it was authorised by United States President Harry Truman in 1952 um, with the express purpose of covering up the Roswell UFO incident. And there is like 12 specific, if you look at the Wikipedia page for this thing, there's 12 specific people named, so... I didn't do that much research into it. I think they talk a bit more about the high level people Tom is talking to on the like stuff that stuff they don't want you to know episode, but like Tom's like 
got contact with them apparently so or at least he says he does I also found an interview that Travis did with um, Joe Rogan and I know like oh Joe Rogan yeah I know but it was an interesting interview because he's talking about what do he say he says Travis said from the moment that he met Tom he was passionate about UFOs conspiracy theories like he'd ask Travis to freaking get high with him and they'd just look up at the sky looking for UFOs and be looking out the tour bus looking for UFOs and trying to get people together to just go hunt Bigfoot which I just I just love that so much like like I'm not trying to slag Tom at all like I, I you know it is funny like certain parts of this story is funny especially since you know you have a very successful band and you leave that all behind to to follow this this passion instead And I think Travis himself says that in that interview, which I'll also hopefully remember to link down below. But yeah, to to really illustrate Tom's love of uh, aliens, I've put like a bunch of aliens on his skateboard. these notes oh now we got get to talk about boxcar racer um boxcar racer was like what you call it it was kind of like tom sort of taking a break from blink 182 and doing his own thing and boxcar racer was kind of pop punk no not pop punk post punk that's what it was it's a bit heavier and you know Tom basically did all the stuff that he's always wanted to do, but he felt like he couldn't do with Blink for whatever reason. And he went and he did um, Boxcar Racer, and it's, it's a great album. And I think people should definitely listen to it, it's, it's good. You know, there's a lot of raw emotions on it, it's, it's, it's just good, like... But he went and he did this with Travis and he says he did it with Travis because he wanted to avoid having to hire a studio drummer but it ended up making Feel Mark Hoppus the bassist of the band um, it ended up making Feel making Mark Hoppus feel left out and like they wanted to do something without him and this is where the division in the band really started to like show. Because I feel like one thing we love about Blink-182, one thing Blink-182 fans love about the band is Mark and Tom's friendship is just, it's just in those early years, it's like the most wholesome thing ever. It's just a lovely representation of what friendship is and what it can be very relatable just very relatable wholesome sort of guys and seeing them fight with each other seeing them get pissed at each other is like you know it sucks But that's what really started the division in the band, I'd say. I don't know if there was anything before that that was too divisive. But the division really started with Boxcar Racer.
Elevator is the one song on the album that actually does have Mark Hoppus in it, and I feel like it was a sort of peace offering, in a way. And the song is about 9-11. That's what the song is about. But some of the lyrics, you can interpret them a little bit about how the band is feeling about Boxcar Racer and the division it caused, because one of the lyrics is... Let's forget this and all move on. So it makes me wonder if that's a little bit about how they want to move on from the fight that they're kind of having with Boxcar Racer. Did I talk? Did I take? Did I talk about take off your pants and jacket, which is um. Another interesting title, they've got like a Ratchet and Clank naming convention, which I mean it's like, all of their freaking titles are like some sort of innuendo, like Ratchet and Clank. For some reason I'm drawn to the media that has that, even though, I don't know, why am I so drawn to that? Like, I see Ratchet and Clank up your arsenal, Ratchet and Clank going commando, and I'm like, yep. Is it just a coincidence? Because it's not like I seek that kind of thing out. And, like, I think it might be because, like, I'm not very good at getting sort of innuendo. So, like, I only find it out later and I'm like, oh, that's weird. And, like, if I knew about it beforehand, then maybe I'd be a bit turned off from whatever it is. Regardless. <laughs> um... Then they did their self-titled album, which is just Blink-182. It's their, it's their emo album. This one, this one Tom was looking real emo. And they also got a big hit off this album called I Miss You, which is just kind of peak Tom voice, because Tom has a very um, distinctive sort of voice. A distinctive sort of singing style and the chorus oh, is it the chorus well don't waste your time on me you're already the voice inside my head he always says yed and it's, it's a big meme in the blink 182 community and the wider sort of pop punk emo sort of community yed that and na 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 just nanas in general. Like, I'm so chill with people making fun of Blink 182 because, like, the people who make fun of them the most is themselves. It's like, you think you're being smart and clever making fun of them, but, like, they know. They, if anything you make fun of them for, like, they already know. Like, the main thing people are making fun of them for nowadays is like, oh, they're, they're in their, they're in their 40s? I think they're, I think they're in their 40s. And, they, and they're making, they're making pop punk music and, and kids like it and like, isn't that cringe? And then, they're totally aware of that. They know they're getting older. Of course they do. Of course they know that. I mean, Mark Hoppus... Like, I went and I looked at his Twitter. I don't usually look at Twitter, but I went and I looked at Mark Hoppus's Twitter. And he, he live streams on Twitch. He live streams crosswords. I think it's crosswords on Twitch. <laughs> like, he knows. <laughs> he knows what the story is. He knows he's... He's... He's in a punk rock band that is past its time a little bit, but they're still having fun with it. And he's he's live streaming freaking crosswords on Twitch. I love that. I respect him so much. Another thing I respect about Mark Hoppus is that, you know, he's come out and he says trans rights, which always like is good in my book. Unfortunately, I can't say the same about Tom. You know, Tom... 
You do get a bit worried about him because he is a, a huge conspiracy theorist, and I like Tom, you know, obviously. But I do worry if he has, like, weird political leanings because I feel like Mark has definitely grown as a person. And there is, like, the or slurs used in one of Blink 182's early songs. I think it's Apple Shampoo, or is it Waggy? I always get. Whenever he sings that nowadays, he replaces that that slur with regarded instead. Which I respect that he doesn't want to say the slur and he knows it's bad now. And he's also... Uh, Travis is a vegan, which I respect. I'm, I'm a vegetarian myself. I try to be vegan as much as I can. Um, and Mark says I think he says somewhere I don't remember where I read this so take this with a grain of salt I think he said I need to make fun of Travis for that but now I see that you know Travis was right about that he was right about animal rights the whole time I just, Mark is someone that has grown a lot of lot as a person and I really like that about Mark now Tom now what I think about Tom, if I was to guess, but yeah, if I was to guess Tom's political leanings, I would guess that he's just so hooked up on conspiracy theories and aliens that he's no time, there is no space in Tom's head to be thinking about trans rights, you know? There's no space. I'd like to think... You know, maybe Tom, if he had time to think about it, would be would be like Mark and actually be nice about these kind of things. But um, as it stands, all he cares about is aliens. I like to, you know, I wonder about Tom because like some people who are obsessed with aliens are like, oh, I want the aliens to freaking abduct me and like I'll tell them everything about humans and it'll be grand. And some people are like, um, oh no, get the aliens away, they want to kill us, they want to, they're freaking probing us and all that. I wonder what camp Tom leans into, I'm like maybe it's neither, maybe he's just so obsessed with the the concept of aliens and themselves that like he doesn't care whether they're evil or good or not, he just wants them. Just wants aliens. They're very, they're very interesting to analyse from these sorts of angles, you know? This was just hours and hours of footage of them making weird jokes at, um, during concerts and it's interesting to think about who are these people? What do, what do they want? What do they think? Making this, this cutesy pop punk music. But the division from Boxcar Racer at this stage in the band, after they made their their lovely self-titled album, which is a new cult classic, by the way. I wouldn't even call it a cult classic. It's just a classic, isn't it? You know, it's, it's mainstream enough. It's easy to forget, like, in 2021, uh, that this was, like very mainstream at one point you know like they'd be playing i miss you on the radio um but there was still the vision in the band and on february of 2005 they went on an indefinite hiatus tom went on to make his band um angels and airwaves which is kind of i think it's called space rock it's weird it's like a flanger on the guitar. That's how I describe it. There's a flanger on the guitar. Um, and Mark went on to do Plus 44, which is kind of... It's kind of Blink-182, but more low-key. I really like... really like... Um, some of the songs I enjoy, some of the songs not so much. I like... Um, Quit crying your eyes out, baby, come on. I like that song. Angel 
angels and airwaves now i haven't i haven't went and listened to a, a lot of angels and airwaves i will say but i do enjoy some of their songs but i haven't really given them a fair shake yet because i don't know i'm just not as into this um there's a lot of nuances to this to angels and airwaves that is a bit hard to to comprehend. It's got a bit of um, it's like I skateboard. I know it's like you got a bit of a, uh, you know, from from popping the tail. That's not the tail. That's the front. It should be the front, anyways. Well, he's popping the front because like he just don't give he don't give a shiz he pop in the front um i'm actually going to get a picture of the skateboard up just so i know i'm drawing it correctly not just from my memory i want to see the trucks i want to see the skateboard trucks A look at what the trucks are like. And a very sad thing happens um, after this. Um, Jerry Finn, who um, many people would say was kind of like the secret board member of Blink 182, really kind of helped to hone down their sound he he died in 2008 which i'm i'm assuming the grief must have brought them together a bit thinking about that because they were really close to him and he worked on uh, all their albums past um anema the anema this day i don't think he worked on anema this day but he worked on plenty of albums with them And then, Travis, and I didn't realise this until I looked up about it, but Travis had a near-death experience with a plane crash and he survived. He had really bad injuries, he was in hospital, and as soon as this happened, both Mark and Tom reached out to Travis. And apparently, in the hospital, right there and then, they wanted, they wanted Blink-182 to come back, and they wanted the reunion to happen. And it makes me wonder, like, if Travis never got in this plane crash, would have Blink-182 ever come back? I, I don't know if they would. I don't know if they would. It's just mad to think of, absolutely mad that that is what caused them to come back together. Which you can kind of tell that's an unhealthy reason for them to, to start the band again. Because it's like, they're feeling grief, they're feeling trauma. Especially, especially Travis, feeling that sort of trauma and maybe they want something. This is just me, my own opinion, my own interpretation. Maybe they want some comfort in in that really hard traumatic time for them where you know jerry finn died and travis got into a plane crash and he's all beat up in the hospital but regardless of that they went on to make neighborhoods which is an album that causes a lot of division in the fan base my personal opinion is like I like neighborhoods I don't think it's their best I think it sounds a big thing loads of people say is that it sounds a bit like Ava and it certainly does it does sound like a bit like Ava angels and airwaves that's another thing people call angels and airwaves sometimes
but I, I, I like some songs on it, especially, um, what's it called? I'm gonna look it up. Ghost on the Dance Floor, I really like that one. I love Natives. Natives is great. And the rest of the album is a bit hit and miss for me, but those two songs are, are lovely. I love them. It's a decent album. It's not their best, but it's not their worst either. But you can kind of tell. I feel like, though, since I already like Neighbourhoods, but I feel like it had the potential to be something much better. And I'm not just saying that because I feel like there's some potential there. We know there's some potential there because, you know, although Tom was really excited about, you know, Blink-182 re reunion at the start, he very quickly started to lose ambition, not ambition, excitement for the project. And, like, Neighbourhoods was recorded in separate studios. And I don't even think Tom listened to the to the final mixes, you know? He didn't he just didn't bother for whatever reason. Which is really sad because I feel like if there was more communication from both parties, they could have really made a very solid album. But unfortunately, the communication between them was very strained, and we have the album we get today. And you can kind of tell, I can, I kind of feel like, compared to all other albums, you can kind of tell it's a bit disjointed. It's not bad. Like, they still, they still produce something decent in the end of the day, but they could have made something a lot, a lot better. Which is really sad, because neighbourhoods could have really just been the bee's knees and it just wasn't and that's my opinion of it some people hate neighborhoods some people love it i'm just kind of i i guess i love it but i see that i see why some people don't like it absolutely see why some people don't like it then they did dogs eating dogs and then i think um Tom quit the band again. So they get this lad called Matt Skiba, who is from this band Alkaline Trio, to fill in, much like much like Travis, to quote unquote fill in for a couple of concerts. And they end up really liking Matt Skiba, and Matt Skiba goes on and becomes the main guitarist. Do you know what? I'm I'm happy with that to be honest. Like I want Blink One Eight Two to be around, even if Tom isn't in it. And it's really sad because um, California, which is the first one, the first album they made without Tom. I don't think California is that good. I don't think they were really knowing what they were doing with California. And I think Cali California is the main reason why people criticize them, like, saying stuff like, oh, why are you trying to make this this music that appeals to younger people when you're old and all that? Which, by the way, they should be allowed to do if they want to, but I understand. I don't think that's genuinely what they wanted to do. I don't think they genuinely went out making an album like that, but that's what they ended up making. So California is a bit of a disappointment. I don't... There are some songs I can kind of jam to. There are. There are some songs I can kind of jam to on California. But I don't... It just isn't their best. It's... It just isn't their best, unfortunately. But... Then they released this wonderful album called Nine. 
I love Nine. I think every song on Nine I enjoy. I won't say it's as good as like their old stuff. It's not. But they knew what they were doing with Nine and they were actually trying to make it feels like they were trying to make music that they wanted to make with Nine. And not just music that they feel like would have been popular. They wanted to actually make songs that they enjoyed. I feel like Mark Hoppus, I feel like he genuinely enjoys just making pop music. I think that's what he likes. He experiments a little bit. And we can see like what kind of stuff he enjoys experimenting in with his side products. Projects, I should say. Like Simple Creatures. We can see some kind of stuff he likes experimenting with. He likes them um, messing with new stuff like synths and um, just weird stuff like that. He likes that. Now, Simple Creatures is interesting, by the way, because it's just um, Mark and the leads, the lead singer, I think, from All Time Long, All Time Low. Now, forgive me, I don't think I can pronounce his second name, his his last name. Alex Gascarth? Alex Gascarth? I don't think I got that right, but... Yeah, it's interesting, because I believe All Time Long started out doing... Covers of Blink-182, and now... There he is, he's... He's making music with freaking Mark Hoppus. Lovely, am I right? God be God be happy with that. Um Nine's lovely, I like Nine. It's good, it's a decent album. It's not for everyone. If you if you're not into pop punk you're obviously not gonna like nine i mean i think fantano did a negative review on nine and i don't think fantano the music reviewer on youtube i don't think he likes pop punk that much so that's like totally fair but if you are someone that enjoys pop punk i think you'd like nine i think you would god what am i doing with the shoes and then they went and they made Quarantine. I think Mark kind of just made that on his own, maybe? Because he has a home studio and Matt Skiba doesn't. I don't like Quarantine. Um, I do love the concept of a Blink-182 song that is about what we're in right now, the pandemic. I love that. There is value to that. I don't think Quarantine came out that great. And that's fair because it was made in a home studio. And it was made to be timely. The cover art also gives me the heebie-jeebies. <laughs> but yeah. Um, to round this out, I'm gonna say... Um, Tom DeLonge has this like company called To The Stars Academy. And that's kind of where he does all of his weird alien stuff now he also releases these books called sacred machines because i hope i'm pronouncing that right he, he releases these books he writes books now tom's along is chasing aliens and writing books and i gotta say like i'm just i just like that he's being true to himself i like that's great now, I've said most of what I wanted to say about Blink-182, so what we're going to do, since we're trying something new with this Draw and Talk, is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop here and I'm going to finish this Tom DeLonge, and when you come back, this Tom DeLonge will be almost finished, and I'll talk a little bit about the process of drawing this Tom DeLonge, and give you some final thoughts. Right, the drawn is almost done, so I've come back to talk a little bit more about the drawn. And what I will say is I'm a bit sad because I went and I listened back to what I've recorded and I noticed 
just a little bit of weird audio artifacting. Now, I'm really hoping that that's, um, whoops. I'm really hoping that that's, uh, just because, um, of what I was playing it back on. I'm hoping that's the case, but maybe it's not and maybe you hear that as well and uh, it's not unlistenable or anything but i'm gonna try and sort that i'm assuming it's just because i need to because this equipment has been plugged in for like a very long time probably just need to plug it out and plug it back in so there's no so everything's connected up properly you know because you got the microphone you need to plug the microphone into um what do you call it like an audio processor and then you need to plug a USB into that and then plug that into the computer yeah I think this time the long is done maybe a little bit more highlights on the hair let's have a look see just just to brighten our time up a little bit yeah, I think he's done. It's, it's not as good as I wanted it to be. I think I had I had some trouble with the skateboard getting that to look as good as I want it to be. <laughs> like I really wanted that to stand out and look good. I think... No, maybe if it's a different colour. What if it's purple? What if it's blue? What if it's red? Because he's red. No, what if it's like this colour down here? What if I... I think blue is working a bit better for it. Now something about that is nice. He doesn't look as good as I wanted him to look. I will say that he doesn't. But you know, I think we had a good time drawing him and that's like the important thing when it comes to draw and talk. Now this is different. Now I could have so I'd finished talking about Blink-182 or everything I wanted to talk about and I still and I didn't keep going I waited until I was finished to come back and round this out and as a result I think this episode is only an hour long the last episode I did where I didn't do that it's like two hours long and I want to because I haven't made up my mind which I'd prefer I think this was good for this episode because I don't know, I felt a bit maybe pressured to talk, but maybe that's kind of a good thing, maybe it's not a good thing. It's really hard to know, but it also made me feel like this draw and talk, talk episode wasn't as, I guess, meaty as I wanted it to be. I feel like each episode, you know, each episode should really dive into something, and I'm not sure we dived in as much as I wanted to in this episode but hmm I think we still had a good time with it and this is the Tom of which I produced um art art of Tom D. Long and who knows maybe I'll draw Mark and Travis sometime as well but that's it for this this week I really hope you enjoyed it. Please tell me what you think about it and don't be mean to me. Bye!